<laughs> you know, most of the time, I don't like surprises. Just the thought of something happening to me that I didn't see coming and that I don't have any control over kind of bothers me. <laughs> What the hell is this? However, there are some times that I am pleasantly surprised. Like when I randomly pick a show to watch that I have no previous knowledge of, and it ends up being an absolute blast to watch. And that's exactly how I found the show that we're going to talk about today. Do you like seeing people get cut in half? Oh, yes. Shut it. Well, then I've got a show made just for you. Grab a sword and a bowl of ramen, kids, as we take a spoiler-free look at Blue Eye Samurai. This says bushiest beaver. What? So Blue-Eyed Samurai takes place in 17th century Japan, in a time known as the Edo period, in which Japan had closed itself off from the rest of the world. It's also the story of Mizu, a wandering samurai who is looking for information. And one day, while eating at a local noodle shop, she quickly proves that she is not to be messed with. And after accidentally befriending a would-be apprentice named Ringo, we learn that Mizo is looking for four men whom she feels is responsible for all of the hardships that she's been through. Why? Well, in order to find that out, you really need to watch the show. But just know that when she walks into the town of Kaido looking for the Shindo Dojo, she has murder on her mind. I smoke all the like, like smoke and Joe Frazier, the hell ways up, raising hell with the flavor. As all of this is going on, we then meet a young princess named Akimi, who is trying to make her way the best she can in the very patriarchal society of feudal Japan. And with the help of her valet, voiced by George Takei, Oh my. Has convinced her father to allow her to marry a local samurai and champion of the Shindo Dojo, Taigen, who just so happens to find himself in a duel with a mysterious samurai who is determined to satisfy their revenge and who has blue eyes. So, as Mizu's journey gets bloodier and the bodies start to pile up as her quest for vengeance continues, the series we end up with is well made, incredibly violent, and one of the best shows that you could be watching right now. First off, the show looks fantastic. It's truly an achievement for the French animation studio Blue Spirit, who apparently up until now has only made children's based anime content. But if this is what they can provide for adult-based material, then I'm certainly looking forward to seeing more from them in the future. The characters are all voiced by people that you probably are familiar with, like Kenneth Branagh, George Takei, Jim Halpert impersonator Randall Park, Jim's not Asian, and everyone's favorite Mortal Kombat villain, Kari Hira Tagawa. Your brother's soul is mine. However, in the case of Mia Erskine, who voices Mizu, I was not familiar with her work before this, and I was impressed at how understated and grounded her performance is. Typically, in series like this that have big action sequences, it's easy to get performances that are basically lots of screaming and yelling. But with Mizu, that's not the case. And Ergsign gives her a stoic demeanor that not only communicates her level of determination, but also the pain that she's had to deal with throughout her life. I see you again. I will kill you. However, none of these things matter if the writing isn't any good. And the writing in Blue Eye Samurai is not only a masterclass in writing a compelling main character, but also succeeds with the audience investing in secondary characters as well. Good guys and villains alike all have very interesting stories and motivations that never fall flat and never become boring. I will mention, however, that the story does borrow a few things from other media, like Kill Bill, Pell Rider, The Game of Death. <laughs> and some of you might be saying, Adam, didn't you do a review on Rebel Moon and criticize it for borrowing elements from other movies? And yes, I did. But the problem isn't borrowing elements from other things. It's in the execution of borrowing those elements. And Rebel Moon was executed with the same precision as the Ford Pinto. <laughs> But Blue Eye Samurai takes those familiar elements and perfectly blends them together into something unique and enjoyable. However, with all of that said, this show won't be for everyone. As I alluded to before, the show is very violent. While there are a lot of great character-driven moments that don't have any violence or action at all, when the violence does come, it's pretty brutal. So if that's not something you're into, then you probably want to skip this show. So, at the end of the day, would I recommend this series? Well, I think it's pretty obvious that I do. I really can't speak highly enough about it, and it's been renewed for a season two. So, it looks like it's not going anywhere, at least for the time being. It's on Netflix now. Check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. Well, that's it for this one, folks. Have you seen Blue Eye Samurai? What did you think about it? Leave a comment below and let me know. As always, thank you for being here, and I'll see you next time.